Welcome to Strange Things, broadcasting from the Remundo Rios Mayo Library in Arkansas. Welcome to the show, Strange Things. I'm your host, Chris James. This is season number one, episode 17. Tonight, we'll be talking about Nikolai Tesla, possibly the most creative and ingenious man ever to walk the earth. Him and Leonardo da Vinci had a lot in common, but if you sit in your living room right now and look around you, you will see lots, and I mean lots of things, that are only possible because of Nikolai Tesla's inventions. So sit back and enjoy the next hour of Nikolai Tesla's life as we know it today. Tesla was born July 10, 1856, in Smiljan, in the Austrian Empire, which is today known as Croatia. His father, Militin Tesla, was a Serbian Orthodox priest. And Tesla's grandfather on his mother's side was also an Orthodox priest. His mother, Duka, never received a formal education. Nikolai credited his uncanny memory and creative abilities to his mother's genetics and influence. Tesla was the fourth of five children. He had an older brother named Dane and three sisters. Now, Dane was killed in a horse riding accident when it is said that Nikolai, when he was five, had shot at the horse with a slingshot, causing the horse to rear up. This was just one of many incidents that led to Nikolai's bizarre life. In 1861... Tesla attended the lower or primary school in Smiljan, where he studied German, arithmetic, and religion. 1862, the Tesla family moved to Gospik in the Austrian Empire, where Tesla's father worked as a priest. The Tesla later moved to Korlovac to attend high school. The classes were held in German, as it was a school within the Austrian-Hungarian military frontier. Tesla was able to perform integral calculus in his head, which this prompted his teachers to believe that perhaps he was cheating. However, he was able to do complex mathematical equations simply by thinking about them. No pen or paper required. His, he, he finished a four-year term in just three years, graduating in 1873. Then Tesla returned to his birth town, Smiljan, but shortly thereafter he contracted cholera. He was bedridden for nine months and was near death on multiple occasions. Now this doesn't sound like the cholera that we know today, which usually runs its course in a matter of a week or so, it's uh, complicated by diarrhea, dehydration, which causes more diarrhea, which causes more dehydration. And if the subject is going to die from this, it's usually the dehydration that gets them. But Tesla was in such a weakened state that he stayed in bed for almost nine months. His dad was so overcome with grief that he vowed if Tesla were to pull through alive, that he would send him to the best engineering school in the nation. Originally, everyone just assumed that Nikolai would enter the priesthood, as his father and grandfather had done. Nikolai recovered shortly thereafter. 1874, Tesla evaded being drafted into the Austro-Hungarian army in Smiljan by running away to Tamuge, Croatia. Yes, he was a draft dodger, but there was no war going on, so mostly he was just avoiding the two years of military service. While in Termaige, he explored the mountains dressed up like a hunter. 
Tesla said that this contact with nature made him stronger and helped him recover from the illness that he was still trying to overcome. He read many books at the time. He said that Mark Twain's works helped him to recover the most. By 1875, Tesla enrolled in the Austrian Polytechnic in Graz, Austria, on the Military Frontier Scholarship. So, as you can see, there were no hard feelings that he had evaded the draft. At the time, it was more of a formality than anything else. Young men were expected to serve the country. Well, Nikolai was going to serve his country in far better ways. During his first year, Tesla never missed a lecture. He earned the highest grades imaginable. He passed nine exams, which was nearly twice as many as were required. Even received a letter of commendation from the dean of the technical facility. Tesla worked from 3 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, including Sundays and holidays. During his second year, Tesla came into conflict with his professor over the Graham Dynamo when Tesla suggested that the commutators, other known as bush, brushes, brushes, were not necessary. He argued with his professor, and, well, back then professors didn't much care for it when students argued with him. At the end of his second year, Tesla managed to lose his scholarship and became addicted to gambling. During his third year, Tesla managed to gamble away his allowance and his tuition money. He was later able to win back his initial losses, and he returned the balance to his family. Tesla said that he had conquered his passion then and there. When exam time came, and Tesla was unprepared, and he asked for an extension to study, but he was denied. He never graduated from the university, and he never received credit for the last semester. In December 1878, Tesla left Graz and severed all relations with his family as a means of hiding the fact that he just dropped out of school. Okay, now Tesla is a, high, I mean, a college dropout. His friends thought that he may have drowned in the Mur River. Now, Tesla went to Maribor, now in Slovenia, where he worked as a draftsman. He spent his spare time playing cards, but avoided gambling. March 1879, his father came to Maribor to beg his son to return home, but Nikolai refused. He managed to suffer a nervous breakdown around that same time. 24th March 1879, Tesla was returned to Gospic by the police because he didn't have a residence permit. You see, he was an illegal alien in that country as well, and they managed to deport him. Mulatan Tesla died April 17, 1879, at the age of 60. Nikolai, while going through his father's papers, found a letter from his former professor stating that if Nikolai had continued working like he was, he'd more than likely work himself to death. We're going to take a brief pause here and play some commercials and station identification. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Arkanasa Radio. Do you have skin? Would you like to take better care of it? Call Lourdes James, independent beauty consultant, and set up an appointment. Call 723-3019. If your vision isn't what it used to be, and you're not sure you're seeing Bigfoot or just your neighbor mowing his lawn, stop on by Del Norte Optical, 107 Calle Del Norte, just across the street from the Embassy Suites. You should be able to see what you're looking at.
Looking for a great cup of coffee? Swing on by the Organic Man Coffee Trike. 1002 Eaterby Day, Suite Number 7. Not a coffee drinker? They have hot chocolate, hot tea, and sometimes muffins and cookies. It's a great place to meet your friends for a conversation or curl up in the corner with a good book. The Organic Man Coffee Trike. Life is too short to drink bad coffee. No, don't say goodbye. Stay with us. This is Arcanelza Radio. Quédate con nosotros. Estás escuchando Arcanelza Radio. You're listening to Strange Things with Chris James. Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those commercials. Now, in January 1880, two of Tesla's uncles put together enough money to help him leave Gospic for Prague, where he was to study. Unfortunately, he arrived too late to enroll at the Charles Ferdinand University. He had never studied Greek or Czech, which were both required subjects. Tesla did, however, attend lectures at the university, although as an auditor. He didn't receive credit for the courses. Tesla only spoke Serbo-Croatian and Latin and Italian and French and German and English, but not Greek or Czech. 1881, Tesla moved on to Budapest, To work at the Budapest Telephone Exchange during his employment, Tesla made many improvements to the central station equipment, perfecting a telephone repeater or amplifier, which was never patented nor publicly presented. 1882, Tesla moved to France, where he began working for the Continental Edison Company, designing and making improvements to electrical equipment. In June 1884, he emigrated to New York City, where he was hired by Thomas Edison to work at the Edison Machine Works in Manhattan. Tesla worked for Edison beginning with simple electrical engineering and quickly progressed to solving more difficult problems. Now, Tesla was offered the task of completely redesigning the Edison Company's direct current generators, DC power, In 1885, he said that he could redesign Edison's inefficient motor and generators, making an improvement in both service and economy. Edison remarked, There's $50,000 in it for you if you can do this. This was somewhat a frivolous statement since Edison was stingy when it came to pay. Well, after months of work, Tesla fulfilled the task and inquired about the payment. Edison, saying that he was only joking, replied, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. Instead, Edison offered a mere $10 a week raise over Tesla's $18 a week salary. Well, Tesla refused this meager amount of money and then immediately resigned from the company. Edison had a dark side that most people don't like to talk about. To begin with, a lot of his patents were other people's work. Now see, what Edison would do is he would search patents at the patent office until he found a design that he thought he could improve on. He would tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit different from the original design, and then he would promptly go down and apply for a patent to someone else's invention. And then he would sell it at a reduced price so that people would buy his invention as opposed to the originator of the idea. He also had a vast number of employees all working to design different equipment, which Edison would immediately place under his own name at the patent office. He was also known to threaten people if they didn't pay some of his... uh, less than honorable wages, uh, bribery we would call it today. For example, 
Let's say you bought one of Edison's film cameras and you decided you wanted to make a movie. Well, it wasn't enough that you had to pay for the camera and the film, which both were supplied by Edison. He also expected you to supply him with some of the profits from the movie that you made. Have you ever wondered why Hollywood is way the heck over on the other side of the country? The film industry moved out of New York, moved all the way to the far west coast as a way to get away from Edison's goons. Now, if you saw the movie The Prestige, about those two magicians where one of them goes out to Colorado Springs in order to meet with Tesla and have a fancy magical cabinet built, the two men that show up and promptly burn Tesla's laboratory to the ground, well, those were representing some of Edison's less than savory employees. Getting back to Nikolai, after leaving Edison's company, Tesla partnered with two businessmen in 1886, Robert Lane and Benjamin Vail, who agreed to finance any electrical lighting company called the Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. The company installed electrical arc lights, illumination system designed by Tesla. It also designed dynamo electric machine commutators the first patent issued to Tesla in the United States. The investors showed little interest in Tesla's ideas for new types of motors and electric transmission equipment. They were more interested in developing an electrical utility than inventing new systems. They eventually forced Tesla out, leaving him penniless. He even lost control of the patents that he had generated since he had assigned them to the company in lieu of stock. He had to work at various electrical repair jobs, and he worked as a ditch dicker as well, making a measly $2 a day. Later in life, Tesla would account, re recount the winter of 1886 as a time of hardship, writing, My high education in various branches of science, mechanics, and literature seemed to me like a mockery. Tesla was a fantastic inventor, but a horrible administrator of money. It's just too bad he was never able to meet up with Dave Ramsey. Late 1887, Tesla met Alfred S. Brown, a Western Union superintendent, and a New York attorney, Charles F. Peck. Based on Tesla's patents and other ideas, they agreed to back him financially and handle his patents. Together, they formed the Tesla Electric Company in April 1887 with an agreement that profits would go one-third to Tesla, one-third to Peck and Brown, and one-third to fund development. They set up a laboratory for Tesla at 89 Liberty Street in Manhattan, where he worked on improving and developing new types of electrical motors, generators, and other devices. 1887, Tesla developed an induction motor that ran on alternating current a power system format that was starting to build in Europe and in the United States because of its advantages in long-distance, high-voltage transmission. Tesla had originally come up with the idea while reciting poetry. The motor used polyphase current, which generated a rotating magnetic field to turn a motor. This innovative electric motor, patented in May 1888, was a simple, self-starting design that did not need a commutator, thus avoiding sparking and the high maintenance of constantly servicing and replacing mechanical brushes. The Electric World magazine arranged for Tesla to demonstrate his alternating current system, including his induction motor, at the American Institute of Electrical Engineers. Engineers working for the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company reported to George Westinghouse that Tesla had a viable AC motor, something for which Westinghouse had been trying to secure a patent. In July, Brown and Peck negotiated a license deal with George Westinghouse for Tesla's polyphase induction motor and transformer design for $60,000 in cash and stocks and royalties 
of $2.50 per AC horsepower produced by each motor. Westinghouse also hired Tesla for one year for a fee of $2,000 a month. That would be like receiving $636,000 a year in today's market. Going from a $2 a day ditch digging job to working for Westinghouse at such a improved financial gain looked as if Tesla was finally living the American dream. During that year, Tesla worked in Pittsburgh, helping to create an alternating current system to power the city's streetcars. He found it very frustrating because of conflict with other Westinghouse engineers over how best to implement AC power. Between them, they settled on a 60-cycle AC current system that Tesla proposed so that it would match up with his Tesla motors, but they soon found that it wouldn't work on streetcars since Tesla's induction motor could run only at a constant speed. They ended up using DC traction motors instead. Tesla demonstration of his induction motor and Westinghouse's subsequent licensing and patent, both in 1888, put Tesla firmly on the AC side of the War of Currents. This had started out as a competition between rival lighting systems, with Edison holding all of the patents for DC and the incandescent light bulb, and Westinghouse using his own patented AC system to power arc lights as well as incandescent lamps of a slightly different design to get around the Edison patent. See, the Edison DC light bulb had to be attached with a positive and a negative, whereas the much improved design that Westinghouse had come up with, you simply grabbed the light bulb and screwed it into the socket, kind of like the light bulbs we use today. What else was happening back in 1888? Well, that's the same year that Jack the Ripper made his infamous presence known in London, England. On the 30th of July, 1881, at the age of 35 years of age, Tesla became a naturalized citizen of the United States. He established his South Fifth Avenue laboratory in New York City, and later another at 46 East Houston Street. He lit electric lamps wirelessly at both locations, demonstrating the potential of wireless power transmission. In the same year, he patented the Tesla coil. The acquisition of feasible AC power gave Westinghouse a key patent in building a completely integrated AC system. But the financial strain of buying up patents and hiring engineers needed to build it meant developing of Tesla's motor had to be put on hold for a while. The competition resulted in Edison Machine Works pursuing AC development in 1890. By 1892, Thomas Edison was no longer in control of his own company, which was consolidated into a conglomerate, General Electric, and converted to an AC delivery system as well. By this time, J.C. Morgan was now running things. At the beginning of 1893, Westinghouse engineer Benjamin Lame had made great progress developing an efficient version of Tesla's induction motor, and Westinghouse Electric started branding their complete polyphase AC system as the te Tesla polyphase system. They believed Tesla's patent gave them patent priority over AC systems. 1893, George Westinghouse won the bid to light the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago with alternating current, beating out General Electric's bid by a million dollars. This World's Fair devoted a building to electrical exhibits, the American public, the safety, reliability, and efficiency of fully integrated alternating current system. An observer noted, Within the room was suspended two hard rubber plates, covered with tin foil. These were about 15 feet apart and served as terminals of, a wires, of the wires leading from a transformer. When the current was turned on, the lamps or tubes 
which had no wires connecting to them, but lay on the table between the suspended plates, or which they might be held in the hand in almost any part of the room, were made luminous. These were the same experiments and the same apparatus shown by Tesla in London about two years previous, where they produced so much wonder and astonishment. Tesla also explained the principles of rotating magnetic field in an induction motor that, by demonstrating how to make a copper egg stand on end using a device that he constructed known as the Egg of Columbus. This egg, it was a copper orb, shaped, a copper egg shape that rotated like a gyroscope when the electricity was turned on. The Chicago World's Fair in 1893 is also the location of someone who made Jack the Ripper seem like a kindergartner. H.H. H. Holmes was doing his nasty deeds in Chicago at the time of the World's Fair. 1893, Edward Dean Adams headed up the Niagara Falls Cataract Construction Company asked Tesla's opinion on what system would be best to transmit power generated at the falls. Tesla explained to him about the alternating current system, the polyphase system that Westinghouse had, and that was the system that was installed at the Niagara Falls. 1894, Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radi radiant energy of invisible kind, after he had noticed damaged film in his laboratory in previous experiments. 1896, Wilhelm Röntgen discovered X-rays in X-ray imaging, radiography as it is known today. It appears that Tesla may have inadvertently captured an X-ray image, predating this by a few weeks. Tesla proceeded to do his own experiments in X-ray imaging, developing a high-energy single-terminal vacuum tube of his own design that had no target electrodes and that worked from output of a Tesla coil. Now, Tesla was pretty much into everything imaginable. Strange thing about Tesla, he hated to write anything down. He felt the vision he had didn't translate well to paper. Instead, he simply remembered everything he thought of. He had photographic memory. If not for his associates, none of Tesla's ideas would have survived until today. He did write a book once called My Inventions, which is available at Amazon.com. I tried reading it, but he was way ahead of me when it came to his writing style. We're going to take a brief pause now for a few commercials and station identification. We'll be right back after these words. You're listening to Arkanasa Radio. Do you have skin? Would you like to take better care of it? Call Lourdes James, Independent Beauty Consultant, and set up an appointment. Call 723-3019. If your vision isn't what it used to be, and you're not sure you're seeing Bigfoot or just your neighbor mowing his lawn, stop on by Del Norte Optical, 107 Calle Del Norte just across the street from the Embassy Suites. You should be able to see what you're looking at. Looking for a great cup of coffee? Swing on by the Organic Man Coffee Track. 1002 Eaterby Day, Suite Number 7. Not a coffee drinker? They have hot chocolate, hot tea, and sometimes muffins and cookies. It's a great place to meet your friends for a conversation or curl up in the corner with a good book. The Organic Man Coffee Trike. Life is too short to drink bad coffee. So we gotta say goodbye. No, don't say goodbye. Stay with us. This is Arcanelza Radio. 
Quédate con nosotros, estás escuchando Arcanaza Radio. You're listening to Strange Things with Chris James. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those brief commercials. In and around 1895, the conglomerate General Electric, backed by financier J.P. Morgan, was involved in a takeover attempt and a patent battle with Westinghouse Electric. A patent sharing agreement was signed between the two companies in 1896, but Westinghouse was still cash-strapped from the financial warfare. To secure further loans, Westinghouse was forced to revisit Tesla's AC patent, which bankers considered a financial strain on the company. At that point, Westinghouse had paid out an estimated $200,000 in licenses and royalties to Tesla, Brown, and Peck. Westinghouse explained his financial difficulties to Tesla in stark terms, saying that if things continued the way they were, Tesla would, or correction, Westinghouse would no longer be in control of Westinghouse Electric, and Tesla would have to deal with the bankers to try to collect future royalties. Westinghouse convinced Tesla to release his company from the licensing agreement over Tesla's AC patents, in exchange for Westinghouse Electric purchasing the patents for a lump sum payment of $216,000. This provided Westinghouse a break from what had turned out to be an overly generous AC horsepower royalty due to the alternating current's rapid gain in popularity. Tesla had a very particular sense of style. He believed that in order to be successful, one needed to look successful. He wore white gloves to dinner events every night and prided himself on being a very dapper dresser. Tuxedo, bow tie, always looking sharp any time he was in the public eye. Tesla also suffered with chronic symptoms of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. He was obsessed with the number three. And before entering a building, he would often feel the urge to walk around the block three times. Tesla also developed a phobia of round objects, particularly women's earrings and jewelry in general, and would refuse to shake hands upon meeting people. He also couldn't bear to touch human hair. It's a good thing he wasn't in a hairdresser. Tesla could not stand the sight of pearls, he refused to speak to women wearing them. When a secretary wore pearl jewelry, he sent her home for the day. No one knows why he had such an aversion. 1898. Tesla demonstrated a radio-controlled boat, which he dubbed Teleautomation, to the public during an electric exhibition at Madison Square Garden. The crowd that witnessed the demonstration made outrageous claims about the workings of the boat, such as it was magic, he was using telepathy, or the boat was being piloted by a trained monkey hidden inside. Tesla tried to sell his idea to the U.S. military as a type of radio-controlled torpedo, but they showed little interest at the time. Remote radio control remained a novelty until World War I, when a number of countries used it in military programs. Tesla took the opportunity to further demonstrate teleautomation, automatics, in an address to a meeting of the Commercial Club in Chicago while he was traveling to Colorado Springs. Tesla moved to Colorado Springs where he would have room for his high-voltage, high-frequency experiments. His lab was located near Foot Avenue and Kiowa Street, he chose this location because the polyphase alternating current power distribution system had been introduced there and he had associates who were willing to give him all the power he needed without charging for it. Upon his arrival, he told reporters he was conducting a wireless telegraphy experiments transmitting signals from Pikes Peak to Paris. A 1978 book, Colorado Springs Notes, 
1899-1900, contains descriptions of Tesla's experiments. On June 15, 1899, Tesla performed his first experiment at his Colorado Springs lab. He recorded his initial spark length at five inches long, but very thick and noisy. Tesla investigated atmospheric electricity, observing lightning signals via his receiver. He stated that he observed stationary waves during this time. The great distance and the nature of what Tesla was detecting from lightning storms confirmed his belief that the Earth had a resonant frequency. He produced artificial lighting with discharges consisting of millions of volts up to 135 feet long. Thunder from the release of energy was heard 15 miles away. People walking along the street observed sparks jumping between their feet in the ground. Sparks sprang, sparks sprang from water line taps. When touched, light bulbs within 100 feet of the lab would glow even when turned off. Horses in the livery stable bolted from their stalls after receiving shocks through their metal shoes. While experimenting, Tesla inadvertently damaged the power station generator, causing a power outage. It was found that the dynamo dynamos in the powerhouse, six miles away, were repeatedly being burned out due to the powerful high-frequency currents set up in them, which caused heavy sparks to jump through the windings and destroy the insulation. During another experiment, Tesla sent power 50 miles to a set of light bulbs that were not connected to anything but the ground. During his time in Colorado, Tesla observed unusual signals from his receiver, which he concluded may be communications from another planet. Reporters treated it as a sensational story and jumped to the conclusion that Tesla was hearing signals from Mars. Tesla expanded on the signals he'd heard in 9th February 1901, a Collier's weekly article, Talking with Planets, where he said it had not been immediately apparent to him that he was hearing intelligently controlled signals and that the signals could come from Mars, Venus, or other planets. There is a theory that Tesla was actually receiving EVPs. If this was the case, he was the first person to ever accomplish this feat. 1878, the voice recorder had been invented, but Tesla didn't have one around the lab, so he was never able to record any of these otherworldly voices. 1899, John Jacob Astor invested $100,000 for Tesla to further develop and produce a new lighting system. But instead, Tesla used the money to fund his Colorado Springs experiments. January 7, 1900, Tesla left Colorado Springs. His lab was torn down in 1904, and the contents were sold two years later to satisfy debts. The Colorado experiments had prepared Tesla for the establishment of the Transatlantic Wireless Telecommunications Facility, known as Warden's Cliff, near Shoreham, Long Island. With $150,000, which is about $4,260,000 in today's money, 51% of it from J.P. Morgan, Tesla began planning the Wardenclyffe Tower facility to be built in Shoreham, New York, 100 miles east of the city on the north shore of Long Island. Tesla was granted patents for a system of transmitting electrical energy and an electrical transmitter. When Marconi made his famous first-ever transatlantic radio transmission in 1901, Tesla quipped that it was done with 17 of Tesla's patents. This was the beginning of years of patent battles over radio, with Tesla's patent being upheld in 1903, followed by a reversal decision in favor of Marconi in 1904. It wasn't until 1943 that the Supreme Court of the United States decided restoration to the prior patent of Tesla. The court declared that their decision had no bearing on Marconi's claim as the first to achieve radio transmission, 
just that since Marconi's claim to certain patents were questionable, he could not claim infringement on those same patents. It looks as if the higher court was actually trying to slip around several lawsuits being pursued by the Marconi company against the United States military. A little something to do with all those radios that they were using all over Europe trying to beat the Nazis, well, the Marconi company decided to sue them because of infringement on what they considered their radio system. Tesla later approached Morgan to ask for more funds to build a more powerful transmitter. When asked where all the money had gone, Tesla responded by saying that he was affected by the Panic of 1901, which Morgan had caused. Morgan was shocked by the reminder of his part in the stock market crash and by Tesla's breach of contract by asking for more money. Tesla wrote another plea to Morgan, but it was fruitless. Morgan still owed Tesla money on the original agreement, and Tesla had been facing foreclosure ever since they had begun construction on the tower. Over the next five years, Tesla wrote more than 50 letters to Morgan, pleading for and demanding additional funding to complete the construction of the Wardenclyffe Tesla uh, correction. Construction of Wardenclyffe. Tesla continued to project for another nine months into 1902. The tower was erected to its full 187 feet, in July 1903, Tesla wrote to Morgan that in addition to wireless communication, Wardenclyffe would be able to wirelessly transmit electrical power. In 14th of October 1904, Morgan finally replied through his secretary stating, it will be impossible for me to do anything in this matter. He was backing out on his agreement to help fund Tesla's project. J.P. Morgan was so focused on winning, he was little concerned if a few thousand people lost everything they had, just so long as he came out on top. The only reason J.P. Morgan was funding Tesla's project was to make tons of money. When he found out Tesla wanted to give energy away, Morgan stopped supporting him. A little known fact about J.P. Morgan. The Titanic registered as a British mail ship, was really owned by the American railroad tycoon J.P. Morgan. He had most of the controlling interest in the American railroads and was looking to expand his ownership to seize control of the Atlantic shipping trade. He succeeded in acquiring the White Star Line in 1902. Maybe someday soon he'll will do a show on the bizarre things surrounding the Titanic. But most people don't realize that J.P. Morgan owned the Titanic. Before World War I, Tesla sought overseas investors. But after the war had started, Tesla lost the funding he was receiving from his patents in Europe, European countries. Eventually, he sold Wardenclyffe for $20,000, about 472000 in today's dollars. A lot of people wonder why Tesla never got married. He said women in general were so far above him, he felt he had nothing to offer them. But all of this was in the past. Now the soft-voiced gentle women of my reverent worship have all but vanished. In her place has come the woman who thinks that her chief success in life lies in making herself as much as possible like a man, in dress voice and action, in sports and achievement of every kind. Tesla didn't much care for modern women. I wonder what he would think of the women of today. But that's why he never married. Tesla invented a steam-powered machine, a mechanical oscillator, called the Tesla Oscillator. While experimenting with the mechanical oscillator at his Houston Street lab, Tesla generated a resonance of several buildings. As the speed grew, it is said that the machine oscillated at the resonance frequency of his own building and belatedly realized the danger. He was forced to use a sledgehammer to terminate the experiment just as the police arrived. Tesla had invented the earthquake machine. 
February 1912, an article, Nikolai Tesla's Dreamer, by Alan Benson, was published in World Today, in which an artist's illustration appears showing the entire Earth cracked in half with the caption. Tesla claims that in a few weeks he could set the Earth's crust into such a state of vibration that it rise and fall hundreds of feet and practically destroy civilization. A continuation of this project would, he says, eventually split the Earth in half. Tesla, Tesla theorized that the application of electricity to the brain enhanced intelligence. In 1912, he crafted a plan to make dull students bright by saturating them unconsciously with electricity, wiring the walls of a schoolroom and saturating the room with infinitesimal electrical waves vibrating at high frequency. The whole room will thus, Mr. Tesla claims, be converted into a health-giving, stimulating electromagnetic field or bath. The plan was at least provisionally approved by then superintendent of New York schools, William H. Maxwell. An electric schoolhouse. Just what we all needed. We're going to pause for a brief Station identification and a few commercials. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Arkanasa Radio. Do you have skin? Would you like to take better care of it? Call Lourdes James, independent beauty consultant, and set up an appointment. Call 723-3019. If your vision isn't what it used to be, and you're not sure you're seeing Bigfoot or just your neighbor mowing his lawn, stop on by Del Norte Optical, 107 Calle Del Norte just across the street from the Embassy Suites. You should be able to see what you're looking at. Looking for a great cup of coffee? Swing on by the Organic Man Coffee Track. 1002 Eaterby Day, Suite Number 7. Not a coffee drinker? They have hot chocolate, hot tea, and sometimes muffins and cookies. It's a great place to meet your friends for a conversation or curl up in the corner with a good book. The Organic Man Coffee Trike. Life is too short to drink bad coffee. No, don't say goodbye. Stay with us. This is Arcanelza Radio. Quédate con nosotros, estás escuchando Arcanaza Radio. You're listening to Strange Things with Chris James. Welcome back. Tonight we are discussing Nikolai Tesla's more than imaginable lifetime. August 1917 edition of the magazine Electrical Examinator, ah, correction, Electrical Experimenter, Tesla postulated that electricity could be used to locate submarines via using the reflection of an electric ray of tremendous frequency, which the signal being viewed on a fluorescent, fluorescent screen, a system that has been noted to have a superficial resemblance to modern radar. Tesla was incorrect in his assumption that high-frequency radio waves would penetrate water, but Emile Gurdou, who helped to develop France's first radar system in 1930, noted that Tesla's general speculation that a very strong, high-frequency signal would be needed was correct. Gurdou said Tesla was prophesying or dreaming since he had at his disposal no means of carrying them out. But one must add that if he was dreaming, at least he was dreaming correctly. 
November 6, 1915, a Reuters news agency report from London had the 1915 Nobel Prize in Physics awarded to Thomas Edison and Nikolai Tesla. However, on November 15th, the Reuters story from Stockholm stated the prize that year was being awarded to Sir William Henry Bragg and William Lawrence Bragg for their service in analysis of crystal structure by means of X-ray. There have been subsequent claims by Tesla biographer that Edison and Tesla were the original recipients, that, that neither was given the award because of their animosity towards each other, that each sought to minimize the other's achievement and right to win the award that both refused ever to accept the award if the other received it first, and that both rejected any possibility of sharing it, and even that a wealthy Edison refused to keep Tesla, uh, refused it to keep Tesla from getting the $20,000 prize money. Tesla spent the period of 1919 to 1922 working in Milwaukee for the Alice Chalmers Company. 1928, Tesla received his last patent for a biplane capable of taking off vertically and then gradually tilted through manipulation of elevator devices in flight until it was flying like a conventional plane. Tesla thought the plane would sell for less than $1,000. Although the aircraft was probably impractical, it may be the earliest known design for what became known as the tilt rotor or tilt wing concept, as well as the earliest proposal for the use of a turbine engine in a rotary aircraft. In 1931, Tesla, according to the story, had a stock gasoline engine removed from a Pierce Arrow and replaced it with a brushless AC electric motor. The motor was said to have been run by a cosmic energy power receiver consisting of a box measuring about 25 inches long, 10 inches wide, and 6 inches high, containing 12 radio vacuum tubes and connected to a 6-foot long antenna. The car was said to have been driven for about 50 miles at speeds of up to 90 miles an hour during an 8-day period. The government is supposed to have taken the car, and it has never been seen again. July 11, 1934, the New York Herald Tribune published an article on Tesla in which he recalled an event that would occasionally take place while experimenting with a single electrode vacuum tubes. A minute particle would break off the cathoid, pass out of the tube, and physically strike him. Tesla said he felt a sharp stinging pain where it entered his body and again at the place where it passed out. Starting 1934, the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company began paying Tesla $125 a month, as well as paying his rent at the Hotel New Yorker, expenses the company would pay for the rest of Tesla's life. Accounts on how this came about vary. Several sources say that Westinghouse was worried about potential bad publicity surrounding the impoverished condition of their former star inventor. It had been described as being coached in the form of a consulting fee to get around Tesla's aversion to accepting charity or by one biographer, Mark Saffir, as a type of unspecified settlement. 1935, an annual birthday celebration interview, Tesla announced a method of transmitting mechanical energy with a minimal loss over any terrestrial distance a related new means of communication, and a method of accurately determining the location of underground mineral deposits. Later in life, Tesla talked about his teleforce weapon. The press variably referred to it as a peace ray or a death ray. Tesla described the weapon as capable of being used against ground-based infantry or for anti-aircraft purposes. Tesla gives the following description to stir, to concerning the particle gun operation. The nozzle would send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they would bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 200 miles 
from the defending nation's border and will cause armies to drop dead in their tracks. Tesla claimed to have worked on plans for a direct energy weapon from the early 1900s until his death. At a 1937 luncheon in his honor, concerning the death ray, Tesla stated, But it is not an experiment. I have built, demonstrated, and used it. Only a little time will pass before I can give it to the world. During the same year, Tesla wrote a treatise, The New Art of Projecting Concentrated Non-Dispersive Energy Through the Natural Medium, concerning charged particle beam weapons. Tesla published the document in an attempt to expound on the technical description of a superweapon that would put an end to all wars. See, a lot of people don't realize the inventor of the machine gun. His original idea was that the machine gun would be so powerful and it would be so horrifying that it would keep people from going to war. War would be so devastating and brutal, no one would ever consider starting one. This was in 1890. How many wars have there been since then? Well, lots. So Tesla had invented his death ray or teleforce machine not as a means of killing people. His idea was hopefully to save lives by making it so despicable and so horrible no one would ever consider going to war again. Sometimes the best laid plans just never go the direction people want them to. In the fall 1937, after a midnight Tesla had left the Hotel New Yorker to make his regular commute to the cathedral and the library where he'd feed pigeons. While crossing a street a couple blocks from the hotel, Tesla was unable to dodge a moving taxi cab and was thrown heavily to the ground. Tesla's back was severely damaged. Three of his ribs were broken. Now, Tesla refused to consult a doctor. This was almost a lifelong custom of his. He didn't raise any question as to who was at fault and refused medical aid, only asking to be taken back to his hotel. Tesla was bedridden for some months and was unable to continue feeding the pigeons, which was his only, the only thing he did at that time. He would go down to the park, he'd feed pigeons. If he found any sick or injured pigeons, he'd pick them up, take them back to his hotel. He would take care of them, he'd doctor them, see to it that they received a healthy diet, and when the pigeons were healthy enough, he'd return them to the skies. One pigeon in particular that was just too sick to ever fly again, Tesla referred to this as his wife. I think he may have been slipping a little at the time, but considering how Tesla's mind worked, it's not really that inconceivable. Once Tesla was healthy enough again, he once again started his habit of going to the park, feeding pigeons, taking care of them. This was his only means of entertainment, it would seem. January 7th, 1943, at the age of 86, Tesla died alone in his room, 3327 of the New Yorker Hotel. His body was later found by the maid, Alice Moynihan, after she had entered Tesla's room, ignoring the Do Not Disturb sign that Tesla had placed on his door two days earlier. Two days later, the FBI ordered the alien property custodian to seize Tesla's belongings, even though Tesla was an American citizen. Tesla's entire state, from the Hotel New Yorker and other New York City hotels, was transported to the Manhattan Storage and Warehouse Company under the office of Alien Property. Despite having sold his AC electric patents, Tesla was impoverished and in debt when he died. Today we live in a technical wonderland that was made possible by the ideas and the workings of Nikolai Tesla. But the only thing of value he couldn't find his fingerprints on is the air conditioner and coffee. Sometime, before you go to bed tonight, just stop and give the old man a word of thanks, wherever he might be. 
Yes, the world we live in today was made possible because of the visionary dreams of Nikolai Tesla. I sometimes wonder, who will be our next great inventor? Who will be the man that will come up with some inventions that the rest of us can only ponder in our wildest dreams? Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Tune in next week when we will be discussing vampires. No, not the Hollywood things that people are so used to seeing. I'm talking about the legendary creatures, the ones that Hollywood based their movies on. Until then, this is Chris James, host of Strange Things. See you all next week. You're listening to Arkanasa Radio. Are you, are you coming to the tree with a strong upper man? The same murder three. Strange things that I've been hearing, a stranger would it be if we met at midnight in the hanging tree.